Tom Hartman here with you. And on the line with us for the hour is Congressman Mark Pocan. He represents Wisconsin's second district, as I recall. And yep. yep, the second district and is the first vice chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. You can tweet him at rep, as in representative, rep Mark, M A R K Pocan, P O C A N. And his website, of course, is pocan.house.gov. Congressman, welcome back. Thanks, Tom. Glad to be here. It's great having you with us. So, uh, what are your thoughts on the issues of the day? What's at the top of your brain, uh, uh, top of your mind right now? Well, I'll tell you that the last 24 hours uh, have brought two things to mind. Uh, one, uh, obviously, being Georgia six. You know, John Ossoff, uh, the the main Democrat. I think that people and progressives and Democrats were looking at uh, nearly uh, swept uh, a, a large uh, runoff election, um, just under the 50 percent. So now we'll have an actual runoff coming up with a Republican and John Ossoff. But uh, this is a congressional district that just five months ago, uh, Tom Price won by 24 points, and to uh, see something like this happen happening uh, and, and also watching the involvement from President Trump and trying to affect it, uh, you know, clearly um, this is a message from the voters in an area that may not be perceived as uh, especially progressive or liberal still uh, having a real reaction to the Trump presidency. So I think that's something uh, very big and important to watch. And uh, I think, again, it adds to the momentum we're seeing uh, that people are just not happy with President Trump and his administration, the Republicans in Congress. Um, the second thing uh, was in, in my hometown here in Wisconsin, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, where I grew up, uh, President Trump came to announce some Buy American uh, initiatives. But, you know, I think the part that uh, got me the most, uh, you know, this is a, a hometown where uh, Three decades ago, when I was growing up, um, you had up to 14,000 people uh, making cars out of 70,000 people. Today, no one does uh, because of a lot of bad trade policies. Uh, we just don't you know, have those jobs left anymore. And to come to a company and to announce Buy American provisions when, one, uh, Donald Trump is one of the biggest hypocrites uh, there can be because he produces so many of his goods in China and overseas. And then, two, um, he was a hypocrite when the Keystone Pipeline, uh, when he allowed that to proceed uh, after saying he was going to make everything have American steel, then he gave them a, a waiver not to, uh, because, you know, some excuse that it was already in progress. So his words are so hollow compared to what he promised all those people uh, from my hometown in Kenosha who desperately were looking for someone to have better trade policies so they could have those good family supporting and union jobs. And instead, he comes down there, and I really think it was a slap in the face to people of Kenosha to, you know, to again, put this facade out there. I mean, this guy's a charlatan when it comes to buy American provisions, and I think we need to start calling him out more aggressively on that. Senator Baldwin from Wisconsin has been a, a national leader in trying to put forth initiatives to really do buy, uh, buy American. He needs to get behind him if he's real about this. Yeah, absolutely. And, and maybe he should start making his ties in uh, Connecticut or something. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I, I'll tell you, why this bothers me so much, Tom, is, you know, I, as you know, um, my husband and I have a, a small business in Madison, Wisconsin. I had it for 29 years. And one of the things we do is we explicitly source out uh, American-made and union-made products uh, for promotional items, for business-to-business -business sort of uh, advertising and things, and, uh, you know, American-made T-shirts as opposed to sweatshop T-shirts. And we do this uh, so that, you know, people can support something that supports their values, right, American jobs and even, I think, better uh, union jobs if you can do that. So uh, we work really hard at that, and a lot of people are very cognizant of trying to, uh, you know, follow those standards because they know it's good for people in our country to give family-supporting wages. And yet here's this pressure president who's such a hypocrite. You know, he produces all of his stuff over, overseas. He talks tough, but it's all bluster. And, you know, it's time that this guy quit going around and claiming he's for the working class when he's the one who's screwing the working class. I'm curious your thoughts on, um, and, and I'm not sure I have this, the sequence of events correct. And, and if I don't, uh, correct me. Uh, or if, or if, you're not, if you're not sure, that's fine, too. But um, it, it, it appears that, you know, Trump tweeted about being wiretapped. And then, uh, of course, it, it wasn't by, by President Obama. It wasn't true. So Devin Nunes, you know, tried to conspire with him to make it look like it was true. And that kind of blew up in Nunes's face. And then he tweeted that he was sending an armada to North Korea. And that wasn't true. Uh, but uh, General Mattis was out saying, well, yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, and now it turns out just because the Pentagon apparently accidentally released a picture of the ships in the wrong place, uh, we're all figuring out that, you know, he just uh, is that uh, first of all, you know, the <laughs> announcing, you know, troop movements and things like that. It's almost like a declaration of war. 
But is is that a, a level of incompetence, or I don't care, or um, the, the the that whole process of getting other Republicans to cover your butt when you when you uh, do something totally stupid as as president? Um, I don't know if that rises to the level of impeachment, but I mean, what are your thoughts on all that? Well, I, and throw in the fact that he kept referring to the gentleman from North Korea that Bill Clinton had problems with that we're having problems with today, who is not the same gentleman. Right, that gentleman's um, been dead for a, quite some time. Right, but then we watched other people have the back up those comments, right? Because, again, they've got to make the commander-in-chief not look like the fool-in-chief. So, you know, he's doing that. I, I think it's, a, it's an administration that's on training wheels, and they still fall over. They can't even handle uh, this yet. And whether it be uh, that he's got other people who are giving him advice who also have no experience, so a president with no experience, surrounded by people with no experience, maybe uh, we now realize this isn't such a great idea. <laughs> it's not like you're thinking outside the box. It's just this is a guy who uh, doesn't have a clue. And I think we're seeing that over and over and over. And, uh, you know, I, I think when they bombed Syria, you could, you know, have the same examples from there. And there's other issues where we keep seeing this sort of thing happen. So, you know, we're suffering through a guy doing on-the-job training. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, the on-the-job training has the nation's checkbook and our nuclear arsenal. So that should make us all nervous. Yeah. And I'm, I'm particularly concerned that he doesn't seem to learn well. Uh, law in Jamaica, New York. Watching us on Free Speech TV, you are on the air with Congressman Pocan. I'm still laughing about the training wheels comment. <laughs> I, he kind of answered my question. He he really did. I wanted to ask what uh, uh, his thoughts were on the current administration, and I don't know, maybe he's clairvoyant. Uh, you also wanted to ask about the economic situation in the country, if I have the, yes. the note from yes. Nate Wright. Yes, sir. since since uh, Trump's taken over. I, I've called you a few times, Tom. I appreciate you taking my call. Okay, thank you, Law. Uh, Congressman Pocan, your thoughts on, on uh, Trumponomics, uh, whatever that may be. <laughs> right. Well, I, again, I don't think, you know, they exactly have a direction. You know, he... Um, is, is talked one way on trade, but then performed very differently, more in the style of what the traditional Republicans are, which is, you know, they like to um, keep the current trade policies in place. So for all the bluster during the campaign, again, he's not really living up to that. He's taking credit for all sorts of uh, job actions that were happening anyway uh, that were already in place before he became president. He's trying to take credit for those. Um, you know, he's, uh, again, you know, this is a guy with so much ego that he's going to take credit for everything to the point of actually looking like a fool because it's you, stuff you can trace back. The problem is I read the comments from his supporters on Facebook and on Twitter, and they're fine with him uh, being of the fool. I mean, they're just happy they've got him in place. Uh, and while he may be at overall 36% you know, support, uh, there's a, a contingent that you know, no matter what he says or does, they're going to think it's great. But we're not seeing that yet with the economy. I mean, uh, the only thing I, I, I will point to is the stock market certainly did a little bit of a rally after he was elected, but not, you know, for anything that's been put in place by a policy. And I would argue if he actually does tax reform or if he does uh, do the health care reform he wants to, which is really throwing people off of health care, that is going to have severely negative consequences on the economy. But he's certainly not living up to the promises around things like trade and Buy American that you know, I think a lot of people voted for him for. Uh, we're not seeing any of those improvements in the economy. And that, ironically, have been Democratic positions forever. I, the, the thing that blows my mind is why the, the media never points out that every single trade agreement, with the exception of permanent normal trade relations with China, and which arguably isn't a trade agreement, um, but all of these trade deals, whether it's Korea, Panama, NAFTA, whatever, the majority of Democrats in both the House and Senate opposed them. The majority of Republicans supported them. Yes, Bill Clinton signed off on NAFTA, but, but you know, these are Democratic policies that he got elected on. What does that say? Well, and, and the fact that, again, like last week, I think there were six major issues, in current, including that, you know, he originally said he was going to uh, have China labeled a, a currency manipulator, and now he's, you know, changing his view on that, is, you know, he used that, those easy answers without any policies to back them up 
to get elected. He saw the angst in the economy. And quite honestly, Hillary Clinton didn't. Hillary Clinton, I think, was a little too connected to the elite in the party that she didn't see the economic message that needed to happen that I think Bernie Sanders clearly saw during the campaign cycle. And Donald Trump took advantage of it using Democratic talking points, but this is from a billionaire hypocrite who produces his goods overseas in China. So almost everything he said um, was a lie, uh, and now we're seeing he's, he's going back on those promises he made. So, uh, you know, I, I agree. I mean, you know, this is the problem. Democrats have traditionally wanted trade deals that are about fair trade, not just free trade. That means labor standards, environmental standards, you know, things that are going to actually lift people in this country as well as other countries, and most of these trade deals are all the trade deals really haven't done that.